So you might be surprised to know that there are five uniquely different treble bleed circuits and there's loads of variations among those. The goal of this video today is to be a definitive guide to really help you decide which treble bleed is going to be right for you because even though I might have a favourite it might not be exactly what you need to fit your playing style. I've been repairing, building and modifying guitars and amps and effects pedals for about 15 years full time now and I've noticed in that time there's quite a lot of confusion over treble bleed circuits. What I've done to make this all easier is I've built this box. So I've got my volume control on here, this is a standard 500k audio volume pot that is normally used with humbuckers and then I've got five different treble bleed circuits that I can switch on and off essentially. So the first one is your, just your usual capacitor which is a 330 picofarad cap, um, there are a few other variations on that. The second is the classic parallel arrangement so you've got a one nanofarad capacitor with 150k resistor in parallel. Then probably my favorite, the series one, where you've got, um, this, is an, uh, this is a combination I came up with which is 120k uh, resistor in series with a one nanofarad capacitor. Then we have got the Parish mod, it's a Fender style variation. So you've got, it's pretty much these two combined. So you've got a 150k resistor in parallel with a 1.2 nanofarad capacitor and that is actually in series with a 20k resistor. And right on the end here we have the mystery treble bleed on the end here. So I'll show you this one later on in the video, but it's a little more complex than these other four. First I'd like to go over how a treble bleed works and if you even really need one, because once you actually understand how they work, then you can easily tweak and modify it for your specific needs. Because remember this is not actually a shootout, it's really a comparison and I want you to be able to decide for yourself which one will suit your playing style the best and I'd love it if you'd then be able to tweak it and modify it for your needs. So anyway, let's get into this next section. Okay guys, so I'm going to explain how this works. Now please don't skip this. If you can really visualize this concept in your mind, it's going to help when you want to modify your own treble bleed circuits. So we're going to draw the back of a pot to start. So that's the... And these are the lugs here. Classy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain this in a way that everyone hopefully can understand. So I'm going to leave out little bits and pieces but it's really about being able to visualize it in your mind so then you can go ahead and modify it and tailor things to how you like them. Okay so here's our pot. Um, this lug here is normally the ground lug, this one. So this one will be attached to the back of the pot which is grounded or just sent out to a ground wire. Um, the main ones we're going to be thinking about are these two here, these two lugs. So. This is, we'll call this the input lug, and this is the output lug. Okay, so you will have a wire coming to that input lug, and that'll be, that wire will be coming from your switch if it's a Strat, or if you're using like a Les Paul, that can be coming directly from the pickup itself. And then you've got your output lug, and there's gonna be a wire connected to that, and that could be going to the output jack, or it could be going to the switch, depending on what type of guitar you've got. Now when your pot is set to full, these two lugs are internally connected together, so connected directly together. So the signal is coming into this input lug and going directly out. It's as if you've just connected a wire straight between them, there's, there's no resistance between these two lugs yet. If you imagine as you roll your volume control down, an amount of resistance builds between these two lugs and it's kind of like if you think of your guitar signal kind of like a like a push bike on a highway coming along down this road, it gets here and if your pot is set to full, it can just go straight through and carry on. But if you start rolling your volume down, the resistance built between here is kind of like a headwind making it really, really difficult for the bike to come out the other side to carry on its journey. And now what happens is that the really delicate treble frequencies are just not strong enough to make it through out the other side. Now there is stuff happening at this lug too, but we're just not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna think of these two here. Those frequencies get lost, essentially get lost by this resistance that is building between these two. So what we can do is we can add a little shortcut. So the high frequencies have their own little special path to get around. And one way we can do that is by adding 
a capacitor between these two lugs. So now when the resistance builds between these two lugs as you're rolling the volume down, instead of the high frequencies having to try and force their way through, they've just got their own little road where they can bypass that and then join back up on the other side here and carry on. So it retains those high frequencies. Now treble bleeds don't add any treble to your signal. All they do is create a new path for the, that treble to get around this pot so it doesn't get destroyed on the way through. The other thing to, to think about is that if you are one of those players that use your volume at full all the time and you never roll your volume down, you absolutely do not need a treble bleed. They're only useful if you're rolling back that volume a couple of hairs or, or even a lot, depending on the design. Now there are, like I was saying at the start, five unique designs. This is the, the easiest one, which is just a simple cap. So that's the most simple way to explain it. I hope that makes sense. It's more, it's just about visualizing it in your mind so then you can make adjustments as necessary. Right, the other thing to think about is the pot taper. So there are a couple of types of pots. There's a linear pot, and there's an audio. Now, linear pots have an absolute smooth taper. So if, when you're going from zero all the way up to 10, it's, it's, it's an absolute straight line, pretty much. I mean, it's not gonna be a perfect straight line, but that's the best way to think about it. It's, it's absolute gradual and smooth. Where audio, when you start at zero, it doesn't really feel like too much is happening until you get to sort of six or seven and then it curves up to full volume from there. I don't even really think of the volume pot as a volume control. It's, it's more like a gain structure thing, thinking about how it's affecting the amp and all your effects all the way through the chain. Um, so for me, audio pot is the most useful, but for people using a an ultra clean sound, maybe a linear pot will be really nice because you'll be able to get the exact amount of volume if you're really using it as a straight up volume control. But both of these are gonna affect how this performs and both of these also will react differently to different designs of treble bleed. So it's worth knowing that as well because you will know which treble bleed's gonna work really, really well for for your setup. Now, the majority of pots are audio pots, so in the test today, I'm using a 500K audio pot, so you can see how each one of these designs affects the taper, because that's what quite a lot of them do. They alter the taper of the pot, which for me, if I put an audio pot in a guitar, I want it to stay as an audio pot, so quite a few of these triple bleed circuits don't work well for what I'm after as a guitarist, but they might be absolutely perfect for you. So the other thing is, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to have you on board. We've got a lot of cool videos coming up. Anyway, let's go to the next section, which is the testing section. So what I've done is I have disconnected my volume control here and I have re essentially relocated it to this position here. So the tone control, the switch, Everything works the same, but this is now my volume control as far as my pickups are concerned. And we're just running ultra dry straight into the console here. So you can hear the tiniest little differences as best, as best we can. Right, so each switch is gonna engage a treble bleed circuit. So this is the capacitor switch, switch number one. Second one is parallel, series, the parish mod, series parallel, and then the mystery one down the end here. Now as you can hear, take this silly thing off. As you can hear as I roll through these, the volume here is on full at the moment. You can hear there's no difference between the when the triple bleed mod is in or when it's out. That's because as we learned just in that last section, it is only active when this volume pot is actually rolled down a little bit. That's when it actually becomes active. Right, so firstly, let's have a look at pot taper. So as I roll down here, a little bit. If I engage these now, you'll hear them do something. So the cap. The, uh, the, the parallel. Now you can hear on that one that there's, it sounds like there's a volume boost. That's just the this triple bleed circuit changing the taper of this pot. Then we've got series. A 
a little tiny, tiny bump in volume there. Then we've got the Parish Series Parallel. Same thing there, bumping up the volume in the mystery one. That has a that is a massive bump up that one. That's quite surprising. Okay, so as we go through the taper, listen to the differences here. If I roll this down, this volume down quite a lot, we'll just play with this, just the cap, just the 330 pika farad cap. You can sort of hear the volume stays relatively the unchanged. If we go to the parallel section, this should be a boost up. So you can hear it's it's definitely louder. It's it's not it's altering that pot taper, which may be an absolute perfect thing for what you're after. Series. Parish. And mystery. So quite a big difference between those five. And they are all Definitely valid uh, designs, it's just depending on what you're after. Okay, so let's just go through this pot taper. As you can hear, this is being an audio taper pot, the roll off is quite quite quick, and for some people that drives them nuts. But if you're using it to control dirty sounds, fuzzes, like we're going to show um, soon, it's absolutely invaluable. You need to have that quick roll off to be able to clean things up. So let's just go through. So that's just a cap. This is the the most common one, the, the parallel. So let's, let's check it against this one. To me, they, I mean, in the room, it almost sounds exactly the same, the parish and the parallel. I don't know if there's, it doesn't feel like there's too much difference between those two. If we roll lower. And then you've got my favorite, the series. So this is one I use a lot. It really, it retains that pot taper, which is something that's really important to me. So the, the change from adding that triple bleed circuit onto that pot and, and taking it away, there's not a crazy volume change. And here we've got the mystery one. Let's have a quick look at this, this guy. So. Man, to me that almost turns that audio pot into a linear. So it feels very smooth, the, the change feels very gradual. Far out. Yeah, it really alters the taper. So it is a really nice, it's a really nice treble bleed. It sounds very even. Frequency wise, as you roll down. Actually, if we combine a couple, we can actually combine triple bleeds. So if I put the series, my favorite, just with the cap. So essentially it's a sixth, <laughs> a sixth design. So we've got 
um, the 120K resistor in series with a one nanofarad capacitor, and then um, in parallel to that, we've got a 330 picofarad capacitor. Can't actually hear in the room if it's doing that much, so it'll be interesting to hear in post. I'm actually pretty impressed with the 330 picofarad one. I mean, I suppose Steve Vai and those guys use it. It's not as spiky as I thought it would be. And I mean, the classic one does sound very good. Just that pot taper. That would drive me kind of crazy having my pot taper change so drastically because I, if I want a linear taper pot, I just put that in. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have some circuitry changing how that reacts because that's really important to me having that roll off as we're going to see in the next section i'm just going to hook a fuzz up to it and then we're going to do a quick test just so you can see what that roll off is like and how that works with those triple bleed circuits so what i've got here is a new fuzz that i've been putting together i've got a project i want to do in a future video with this fuzz and show you how to build it it's a really really cool fuzz it, it's ultra responsive and it it, it kind of um, makes your guitar part of the circuit, so your volume control becomes an extremely important part of this fuzz. So it's a great one to do this um, demonstration with, and it's kind of based on that whole uh, gizmo principle with the, with the clicky switch. Sorry, that one's not stuck down. Anyway, where were we? About there. So you've got sort of 12 different fuzz voicings there. Anyway, I've got like a bit of a slightly dirty sound. Well, quite dirty. Depends on how I play. Now, when you add fuzz to the mix, or fuzz like this, there are really, uh, there are fuzzes that are ultra responsive like this. When the volume's on full, like we have here. You got that sort of sound. Now, my favorite thing to do with a fuzz like this, because uh, certain fuzz engines make the nicest overdrive sound. So if I roll this down, You'll hear really quickly, it absolutely just changes that whole sound. And that is a great sound in itself anyway. And it's definitely softer in the top end, but if we start adding these treble bleeds, like just the cat, I suppose this is where just the cap can feel a little spiky. You can really hear that bite come straight back in. If we put the series one on, my sort of favorite. Still hear how it adds that clarity back. Now, if we use the parallel um, setting, I mean, it's still a cool effect, but it doesn't give the same roll off. So it sort of goes back into being a pretty full on fuzzy. Instead of just adding that top end back, parish one and the I mean that the the mystery one actually pretty much destroys the whole taper altogether so it's more of a linear taper nice and even though so you can sort of see there how much how much control we've got just the violin control normally obviously that would be in your guitar so that was a really uh, just a quick example of what i mean by uh, getting the taper right on the pot as when you're controlling things like duty sounds or fuzzes especially ultra ultra dynamic fuzzes like this uh, red gizmo fuzz okay so the one that everyone's probably been waiting for the mystery treble bleed the one on this end here now this one actually uses a dual gang pot now i can hear people saying but wait you said this pot was a normal guitar pot in here. Let's describe what it is. A dual gang pot is really two pots stuck together. So there's a normal pot and then there's one piggybacking off the back. So the cool thing about a dual gang pot is you don't have to use that pot stuck on the back. Now when we flick the switch here, turn on number five, it engages that pot on the back. And as you can see from the diagram, what's happening is that as you turn the volume control, that high pass filter is being 
varied as you turn the pot. So as the pot rolls down, the filter is also changing at the same time, which is quite a cool concept. And it creates a really, really nice, even roll off of those sounds. If I turn it down. It sounds almost the same all the way down. Which is actually pretty cool. So that's how that one works. So give that one a go in one of your guitars. Okay, so I hope that cleared up a lot of your treble bleed questions and I really hope now you're able to modify and install your own treble bleed circuits with your own combinations and don't be afraid to try some different resistor and capacitor values. You might come up with a really awesome combo that's, that's quite unique. And if you do come up with something cool, please post it down in the comments. So have a great week, guys. I've got a really cool video planned, so please stay tuned for that one and we'll catch you next time. Cheers.